Look at you. I didn't even have to remind you. I know. And I had, but I will say it's just because I had just told Lindley, I was like, please remind me to record. So it was like fresh on the brain. We'll give it another minute because I still have people joining and then we'll go ahead and get started. Jason, aren't you giving away a ton of federal aid at the end of this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say not Whatever. today, not today. <laughs> okay, we can go ahead and get started. And then if people start to join, I can add them in. Um, if everyone will just, so that way, since we're recording, if you would just go ahead and mute your um, Zoom account. We'd love to see your face, but understand a lot of you have a lot going on. We're really thankful you took the time to join us today. We are going to record this and send it out for anyone who couldn't join us um, at this time, but we want to welcome you. I'm Kelly Petkavish. I'm the scholarship uh, coordinator with the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee. For those of you who maybe aren't familiar with the Community Foundation, we are located here in Nashville. We serve 40 Middle Tennessee counties along with three Kentucky counties. Um, and our, our mission is um, taking generosity and meeting the need in the community. And so that's not only with our generous donors that come in wanting to fund something, but it's also with our resources and information. So in, in saying that today, we wanted to provide just a scholarship update, some scholarship information for you all. So we are hosting this in partnership with TSAC. Um, the lovely Jason C is here. Here with us today and then also the amazing Lindley So with Connexion America. So to start us off, we're going to have Jason kick us off. So Jason, I'm handing it off to you. Thank you, KP. Uh, forgive me. I know I just have two slides to go over. Are you controlling or can I control two? I, I can control it. Maybe cool. easy. Awesome. So just holler at me when you yeah, want to. Yeah, I'll, I'll just holler at you. Well, guys, happy Friday, TGIF, right? Um, I think many of you just kind of scrolling through. I, I think uh, I know most of you on here, but just in case, Jason C., I'm with the Tennessee Higher Education Commission and the Tennessee Student Assistance Corporation. Um, you may know, I'm going to say me better as I'm the Hope Scholarship person, the Promise person, et cetera, et cetera. Um, two slides. The first one, just a quick state aid update. These are things that I've shared Um during the holidays, but just knowing, right, how we're all busy, as KP pointed out, and especially as we lead up to the holidays and thereafter, uh, things can get lost, and, and these are going to be reminders I will be sending out again. But the Tennessee Student Assistance Award, this is the state's version of the, our Pell Grant, so for, um, you know, students that have a need, and specifically for TSCA, you must be a U.S. citizen, the student must be a U.S. citizen, you know, for years, based on a certain EFC, uh, they would qualify for TSAA. Well, the announcement that we made in late fall was, now, guys, EFC um, for TSA purposes, has aligned with Pell Grant eligibility. That's awesome news. You know, for years, it was a zero to 2100 EFC. So in other words, you had a vast group of Pell eligible students who were not also TSA eligible, but now the two programs align. So if you have a U.S. citizen who is Pell eligible, which currently is a zero to 5,846 expected family contribution, not to assume anything. The EFC is that number that's derived um, from completing the FAFSA. As long as that EFC is between zero and 5,846 per FAFSA, as long as the student is a U.S. citizen, they will now be TSAA eligible. The other big news is for years, um, Depending on the type of college they attended, that determined their award amount. But beginning with the 22-23 academic year, TCAT students, community college students, and four-year public college students will all have the same TSAA amount, $2,000 per academic year. 
right? So whether I'm going to TCAT um, Nashville, whether I'm going to Austin P, um, whether I'm going to Motlow State Community College, if I am TSAA eligible, my award amount will now be $2,000 for that year. That is increasing the TCAT and the community college amounts. That said, when I'm finished, I'm going to just share everyone in the chat the, the updated state aid summary. It's something I sent out uh, with this announcement in late November, but just in case you missed it, I'm going to send it again. So there's your TSAA update. Um, final update just as of right now, you know, priority FAFSA deadline for TSA purposes is February 1. Secondly, NED McWhorter Scholarship, just a, a, FY, the NED McWhorter Scholarship application is available now through the TSAC student portal, that tn.gov slash TSAC student portal. As a reminder for those of you who may be less familiar with McWhorter, this is our most competitive scholarship. Um, Generally, comma, historically, we only award this to approximately 50 seniors, although that amount can um, fluctuate year to year. And what we're looking at here is for students that have a 29 ACT and a 3.5 uh, GPA through the seventh semester, we encourage those students to apply. But please understand, it's highly competitive. Only 50 of these will be awarded. Deadline is February 15th. I'm going to begin kind of sending a reminder about McWhorter beginning next week statewide. KP, next slide. And KP, hopefully when you review the slides, you liked the title of this, which is FAFSA Psi. Um, and we'll get to that in terms of the, the second bullet in a bit. Um, just in terms of all the issues and errors that have been encountered this year. That's why I've indicated the word psi. Um, I will say this just to start here. As of today, February 1 remains the promise and TSAA deadline. Again, as of today, um, that remains the deadline. If anything were to change, I think y'all know me, I will share out any changes, but as of today, February 1 remains the promised TSAA FAFSA deadline. As a reminder, if you're a school counselor, we encourage you to track your FAFSA submission through the Tennessee Promise Report via the FAST system. FY guys, when y'all log into your, your, the system, y'all do have a FAFSA by high school report. There's various reasons that I've explained on previous webinars why you shouldn't use that right now. So I would encourage all of you to, again, continue to pull your promise report to track FAFSA completion leading up to the February 1 deadline. As far as the side comment, um, again, folks, you know, FAFSA is aware of application issues. Obviously, I, my team, and you guys have been aware of these issues since October 1. It's been a very, very bumpy ride, to say the least. Um, you know, I am now beginning to report any FAFSA issues and error messages that my team uh, gets on, um, sees in the field directly to FAFSA on a weekly basis. Um, that's something I've, I've, I've been very blessed to, to have made contact recently with someone that wants this information to try to improve the system. Here's the quick problem. Folks, you know, unfortunately, for security purposes, um, because, right, there are people that want to do bad things and steal information, um, Federal Student Aid had to switch um, software um, at the beginning of the cycle. Well, unfortunately, because they had to do it and they really didn't have time to test it out and because FAFSA has to launch October 1st, that's why we're encountering all these issues. Like, I know it stinks, but there's part of me that also has grace with all these issues. And what we all we can do right now is try to plug through those issues the best we can. Um, so if why? So KP, uh, Lindley, as, as I maybe turn it over to you, some of you may like chat questions and feel free. Um, we, we discuss about sharing tips. Here's my two tips. Have patience and have more patience. Not only is professional, but also it's something I would encourage our parents, students as well right now, just have patience and more patience. And again, guys, y'all got me and, 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 and y'all know this, 
if if someone's having so much trouble, there may be some suggestions I can give you and provide you. And most of you all have my cell phone number. If not, I'll share it with you. So that being said, KP, I'm going to pause and turn it back over to you. Thanks, Jason. Um, like you said, if you all want to put any questions you have in the chat right now, we have a time specifically at the end of the presentation to go over questions. So please feel free to do that and we'll get to those at the end. Um, again, I'm with the Community Foundation in Middle Tennessee. Um, I just noticed an error I made in my slide. I put C. MFT instead of CFMT. So I'm sorry, guys. Um, but with the Community Foundation, a lot of you are familiar with our scholarship application. Um, we changed a, a little bit this year. So in the past, our application opened um, in February and didn't close until later in March. And we didn't award scholarships typically until June or July. And I really, one of my main goals when I moved to the Community Foundation was to shift that so that students can use their awards to help make their college decisions. Um, we really wanted to get students these awards prior to the May 1st National College Decision Day. So our goal this year is to get decisions out April 15th. Um, moving forward, you can go ahead and pencil in our application from here on out will open December 1st and close February 1st. We really wanted to parallel other national financial aid processes um, and make sure our deadlines lined up with that so students, again, could factor these awards into their college decision. So that's something we're really excited about, um, those decisions coming out on April 15th. Um, and our application is on our website. I can put it in the chat here in a few minutes. Um, so that way you can share it with your students. You should have all received notice when the application opened. If for some reason you didn't get that email, let me know so I can add you to our database. Um, this year we have added a test optional component. Again, one thing I was really um, determined to do when I moved over to the Community Foundation was to align again with best practices that are happening in the college world. Um, and so many schools were going test optional. So we do have about 150 funds right now associated with our scholarship application. Some of those do require a test score. However, not all of them do. So if a student, when applying, decides to apply test optional, they will disqualify themselves from those funds that require a test score, but that is not the majority of our funds. So do know that that is an option for your students. Um, we do not want any paper anymore. <laughs> do not send us transcripts. Do not send us test scores. It is all electronic. The student will upload all of that information into their application. Um, I think one thing that sometimes holds our students up are some, every scholarship application is different. Some students put in the information and then can just move on and submit their application with ours. They put in their recommender's information, their counselor information, and then they have to wait until they upload those items, come back in, mark as complete so they can submit the application. Um, a big question I've been getting lately, and I'll go ahead and address this. A lot of students have been asking, we do ask for uh, proof of being admitted to a college. A lot of students say, well, I'm still waiting on my final decision, or I'm still waiting to hear back from a college. That's fine. Encourage your students right now to put in an acceptance letter for their top choice that they have been admitted to. We do a verification process on the back end once students have been awarded. So if their school has changed at that point, they can let us know. But for right now, encourage them to put in an acceptance letter from their top choice as of today. So we can just show that they are planning to enroll in college. Um, we have a brand new building coming and we're super excited. Right now we're located in Green Hills. We're not moving that far. We're going to be at the corner of Woodmont and Belmont. And the really exciting thing is not only are we going to have one building, but we're going to have two. Um, and one of those is going to be solely focused on hosting events for the community. So we're hoping, you know, post pandemic, post everything that's going on, we can host an event like this in the future in person in our building. We can host FAFSA events for you all. We really, again, want to serve the community. So we're happy to have that building to meet the needs of you all um, and the community needs. Um, another super exciting thing, not only our amazing partnership with Connexion Americas, 
but we are also partnering with Metro Nashville Public Schools to provide translation services. So the amazing Lindley So with Connexion has um, offered to provide translation services. You know, a lot of our students are happy to fill out applications, but giving financial information like they do in ours, their parents can be a little hesitant. So if you have a student that speaks Spanish that needs assistance or their parents entrusting that application and knowing it's something they can give that information to, Lindley's information is on our website as a translation partner. And then for any of our Metro schools, their entire um, translation services team is willing to translate the application into any of the over 100 languages they serve throughout Metro. So we are very, very excited about that partnership. If you are in a county that is not part of Metro and you know you're going to have students that need that help, please let me know. Metro right now can only serve Metro students, but we are looking into some other options for the future. Okay, a couple more tips for the application. Um, as I just came from the high school side, I know how much kids want to fill out things on their phones. This is not an application you can fill out on your phone. This is a real time commitment application because one thing we really pride ourselves on at the Community Foundation is telling our donor stories, um, why they wanna give this money and why they wanna help out their community. We want our scholarship applicants to do the same. We really want to know their story so that way our scholarship committee can award the money in the best way possible. So it is a time commitment. It is a lengthy application. It probably takes about 45 minutes um, to complete um, in its entirety, but that's just because we want to hear the student's story. And again, we have 150 funds that are funneled through this one application, the most in the nation of any community foundation. So we want to make sure to know their story so that we can align the proper funds with each student. Um, kind of same thing, just as much as we want the students to tell their story, we want the people who are recommending them to tell their story too. We just had another uh, smaller application that went out to one of our employer-based funds. And some of the letters of recommendation that students had, the recommender would just do a sentence or two. Um, and we really need to know the student. Um, now, I don't want three pages. <laughs> our, our committee doesn't want that. But really encourage your students to pick someone that's going to take the time to tell that student's story, um, what makes them unique, what makes them deserving of this money, because that's what our committee really relies on in making those decisions. Um, again, we have 150 funds, again, the most of any foundation in the nation. Um, I just had a meeting yesterday to start two new funds already. So we are continually growing um, that fund amount. Once someone starts a fund with us, it is permanent. Um, it stays with us forever. Um, so we're really excited about that. And the great thing about this is this is an application your students should complete every single year they are pursuing higher ed. We have scholarships for undergraduate students. We have scholarships for grad, doctoral, every single level of education that a student could be pursuing, we have scholarships for them. Um, and I was on the phone yesterday. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Josh Turner, the country music artist. I was on the phone with his management team for their fund and they like to invite their recipients out to a concert and hang out with Josh Turner for the weekend and get to um, have that experience. So a lot of our donors do some really neat things like that for our students who are awarded as well. Um, we know how much students are, so many things are being thrown at them right now and they're more likely to do something where they recognize someone. So something we're working on in the future is celebratory kits. Once we announce who's been awarded each fund, if a student at your school has been awarded a fund, we are going to send you a celebratory kit already made with an Instagram post, a Facebook post, information about the student and the fund that they've been awarded. So that way you all can share it on your social medias. So that way kids can say, oh, hey, my friend got this scholarship. I should apply apply for this fund next year because it's someone they know that got it. Um, and as someone who used to do some social media in my previous job, I know that's like the last thing you want to do at the end of the day is put together an Instagram post. So if we can go ahead and send it to you pre-made, that'll help out a lot, we hope. 
Um, and then last but not least, FAFSA assistance. Um, I have three FAFSA events this upcoming week. I am by no means as knowledgeable as Jason C, but sometimes students just need someone to sit with them as they're going through it and assure them that they're doing it right. Um, and so I'm always happy to come and help with FAFSA events. That's something my boss really wants us to do um, with the foundation is to go out and help our community get those FAFSAs completed for students. So if you ever want me to come to your school and meet with students or come to an event you have after school, I'm happy to do that. Don't hesitate to reach out. Um, that's all I had on my list. So I'm gonna kick it off to Lindley now. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Um, so like Kelly said, I'm Lindley Stowe with Conexión Americas. We're a nonprofit uh, in Nashville. We do focus on serving the Latinx community, but uh, several of our programs are open to all immigrants in the community, uh, providing support. Obviously, we only have Spanish speakers on staff, but we still have resources for any students who are first gen immigrants. Um, if we have any counselors here from Overton, Glencliff, or Cambridge, you're hopefully familiar with the Escalera program that has permanent programming in those schools. Um, so they're helping the students uh, in, within that population. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about my role, and I'm going to talk about DACA and undocumented students, which may seem like a very niche group, but it is probably, if you're not aware of any in your school at the moment, there are almost certainly are several, um, but for obvious reasons, they don't, they often don't share that information. And it is a rapidly growing group within Middle Tennessee. Tennessee has one of the fastest growing uh, Latinx immigration communities in the nation. Um, so we're just gonna see that number keep growing. So the kind of the bottom line that I wanna answer for everybody right now, if it's a question you, you have asked yourself and are not sure of is, can DACA and undocumented students enroll in post-secondary institutions in Tennessee? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, and when I talk about DACA, those are recipients, of, those are dreamers, they've received um, deferred action for childhood arrival, um, protection from deportation. So they have received a social security number, but they, that social security number only serves for the purpose of a work permit. So there's a lot of confusion for students who have DACA because they have a social, but that does not qualify them for FAFSA, any of the Tennessee Hope Promise programs, and it does not qualify them for in-state tuition. So they're still paying out-of-state tuition at state schools. So when I talk about DACA and undocumented in Tennessee, for most of the policies and procedures, they're going to be doing the exact same thing. There are a couple of deviations I'll talk about um, briefly, but we're going to talk about them as a group together. Um, so it is extremely important for those students to be aware that that's an option for them from freshman year, like as soon as possible. And I know this is true for everybody, but um, focusing on their GPA and stressing the importance of their GPA, because for these students, competitive scholarships and merit-based scholarships are going to be so much more important, um, are gonna be extremely important. They're going to be very reliant on those scholarships. And there are scholarships that are specifically for DACA and undocumented students that I'll share with everybody. Um, but just having that high GPA is all the more important. Uh, so they need to be taking high school seriously from freshman year and hopefully knowing that college is an option can help them keep that focus. Um, so what are some of the same parts of the college going process and what are some of the different aspects that are going to change for these students? Um, so financial aid, I talked about that a little bit. So they're not going to, bottom line, our recommendation is that neither DACA nor undocumented students submit a FAFSA. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of DACA students get confused about that because they have that social security number, but their, DACA, their FAFSA will not be processed. They'll just get an error message every time they try to submit. So they're not gonna submit a FAFSA. So that rules out the Pell Grant and Tennessee Hope and Tennessee Promise and a lot of financial aid from some institutions, especially state schools. Um, so they're, again, much more reliant on scholarships. Um, tuition rates, again, they are paying out-of-state tuition at, at public schools. So just to give us an idea of the difference, so MTSU is obviously a very popular choice among a lot of our students. Um, because the in-state tuition rate is, this is for the 2019-20 school year, it was $9,070. 
a year for a Tennessee resident. The out-of-state tuition is 27,742. And looking at Trevecca, the tuition is actually a little bit less than that, 26,898. So we're looking at a private school that's actually gonna end up costing less than one of our state schools, one of our public schools for this student population. And the major difference is that Trevecca is going to offer far more uh, financial aid opportunities to these students. So typically private institutions are better options than public schools. The one change here, the one caveat here is we have TCAT. So TCAT doesn't have in-state versus out-of-state tuition, right? Their programs just have a set cost, whichever program it is. Um, but for undocumented students, if they're studying a program that requires a state board at the end or a state certificate, they will not qualify to sit a state board, take a state exam, any of that. DACA students, however, their social security number will allow them to sit one of those state boards. So cosmetology or one of something in healthcare that requires a state license, they will qualify, undocumented students will not. So that's the one difference I'll talk about for now. Um, so the best school options we found, if they're staying in Middle Tennessee, uh, the best options for our, this student population have been Lip Lipscomb, Trevecca, and Cumberland. And I'll talk about why you know, Belmont and Vanderbilt are obviously also private universities, um, but there's a certain partnership that the first three schools participate in that I'll share, I'll share the scholarship program. So Kelly, we can go to the next slide. Thank you. So having this conversation with these students, because um, it can be, you may have no idea who these students are exactly. A lot of teachers will think it's all of their English, their ELL students, but it goes far beyond that. So a lot of these DACA and undocumented students may have been here since they're babies. So they don't need English classes. They're in the regular classes. So a lot of schools invite me in to speak to their English language learners, and that's great. And I, I'm happy to do that, but we're still missing a huge amount of the population. Um, so starting this conversation early, again, from freshman year, talking about the importance of G. PA, as well as tax verification. So obviously, even for students who are citizens whose parents may be undocumented, uh, talking about the importance of filing their taxes, doing it every single year the right way is extremely important. Um, and normalizing this information, one way that you can show students that you are an advocate and an ally is including this conversation with all of the students, even if if you have a classroom of 25 students and one of them is undocumented, but you include this information in the conversation, they know that you're aware of their presence, even if you don't know it's them specifically. They know that you're here to support them and offer them resources. And it's also teaching other students that this is becoming part of our society, this is becoming normal, and we need to include it in all of our conversations. So not alienating them, including them with everybody in the group. Um, is a great way to show them that you're an ally, letting them know that whatever they disclose is between you and them. Um, because these students from a very early age have been told that they can't share any disinformation with any figure of authority, right? So if they don't wanna disclose that, but you have a strong feeling, then just giving them all of the information and resources that exist for them is a great way to show them that you are an ally and that you have their best interest um, at heart. So, so I'm trying to go fast because I wanna respect everyone's time. So I apologize, it's a lot of information going fast, but here's a list of resources. The ECE scholarship has been our most successful because it's local to Tennessee. That is the one that partners with Lipscomb, Trevecca and Cumberland. And it doesn't fully cover the tuition, but for example, our students who are at Lipscomb are paying somewhere between five and $10,000 a year in, uh, in tuition rather than, 31 or 2000, whatever Lipscomb's tuition is now quite a bit. Um, so it's a huge difference and it can really be the difference between a student getting to go to college and not. Golden Door, Questbridge, um, really competitive national scholarships, but if you have high achieving students, they can be, they do cover full tuition. Um, those have really early deadlines in September. So again, the importance of starting preparation early um, is worth mentioning here. Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee, Kelly has been fantastic working with me on, on updating the application to make sure that DACA and undocumented students know it's open to them as well. And then the last three are websites that have some scholarships and other fantastic resources for this, um, 
for the student population. Once again, a lot of information and it's already 1101, so I apologize. But if anybody wants my contact info, if you do have a lot of students that you think may have, be DACA undocumented or you need some Spanish resources, please reach out. I am very happy to come to your school, to meet with students, anything I can do to support. That's it. <laughs> And we do have time for questions. So um, if there are any questions, I know someone in the chat already asked about us sharing the presentation. We are gonna share it out. I'm gonna have our comms team um, do all the link stuff because I don't know how to do that, but um, <laughs> they're gonna email it out to our full list of registrants. So you will be getting a recording of this presentation. So um, thank you, Missy, thank you. Um, any questions that anybody has. And I will say like Lindley and I are actually going to um, a FAFSA event together next week. Um, so that way we can both be there to help students because poor Jason C can't do the whole county by himself. So <laughs> we wanna um, be able to help out with that too. So we're always happy to come and talk with your students. Yeah, <clears throat> KP, and you, I've said this to you and Lindley, individually but to everyone on this call i think many of you know that work with me here in nashville obviously um, my situation um, requires me to continue working from home so bless all of you for allowing me to continue doing stuff virtually and folks like kp and lindley um, and others perhaps on this call um, doing in-person stuff to serve specifically nashville students but also students throughout the middle tennessee area that Typically, right, I might be the one that does it. So I appreciate the grace on, from my end. And if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask the question. You don't have to put it in the chat. Anybody have any questions that we can answer for y'all while we're here today? We have a quiet group today, maybe because it's Friday. Everybody's tired after the first week back. I remember that tired, y'all. I remember it so well. We'll hang around. Don't um, If you need to go to another meeting, feel free to. We'll hang around. If anybody has any questions, we're happy to answer them. And of course, in the future, we're hoping to do more events like this in person in our new building, um, but please be on the lookout for more events like this in the future. Thank you, everyone. Y'all are so kind. Have a good long weekend. Stay warm, everybody. Go to the store today. I'm just telling you from, from personal experience. <laughs> Just wait until 5 p.m. because I have a Kroger pickup order at, at 4. Um, I want to make sure I get my products first, right? I did hear. I went to Kroger this morning and I heard the guy say that they had 80 orders just come in this morning alone uh, at that yeah. one Kroger. And I was like, holy moly. I guarantee you that um, a lot of my order will be unfulfilled, I'll bet. <laughs> Jason, you should have sent me your list. I could have gotten it while I was there. Yeah, I know. I actually have a question. Go ahead. Um, we don't get, I don't think many of these students at our school were kind of a, a different, <laughs> different sort of situation here. Um, but if we do, I would like to be prepared to be able to help them. I kind of missed the first 15 minutes of this. I got tied up somewhere, but um, who would be the best person to reach out to if I did have questions about students who may be DACA or undocumented? Ms. Lindley. That's me, Brooke. Sorry, I had to <laughs> unmute my phone. That's me. I, I can put my email address. Is my email address in any of our emails we've sent out, Kelly, or should I put it here in the chat? I would put it in the chat. I'll make sure to include it when we send out that email, though. The one that we're going to get with all the, with the presentation? Yes, yes. Okay, that'll be perfect. I'll just get it there then. Um, yeah, I just, I'm completely... I have no idea what to do with a student if, if they were in that situation. Because like I said, we just don't have that happen at our school much, I don't think. Um, but I would like to be prepared. So thank you for sending that information out. Brooke, I will tell you too, just to make you feel better. I, I worked with this population for a long time and I have to re-educate myself every year because it changes so much. So like, don't 
don't be hard on yourself. You can know everything one year and it changes like that. So it's probably better to have a refresher every year because it does change so much. Lindley, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I got a question real quick, if possible. Um, so for the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee, uh, this has not been something we've been pushing out to students. We've been pushing FAFSA and all this other stuff. Um, yeah. And but yeah, and I'm new in this role. And thank you, Jason, again for all your help <laughs> as well. But um, uh, you know, uh, is the, on the Community Foundation, am I able? Are we able to? Uh, see like all all the different scholarships that they're I mean I, I know they have to do one only one uh, application but just yeah the information on you know this scholar this fund is you know give, can give a scholarship of this much or this one for this much or I mean I mean just to kind of help some of our students because like you said it's time time uh, a little a little bit of time that it takes to, to do it uh, just yeah. to really see kind of the 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 exact numbers I guess uh, that could be possible could be what could could push them to do actually. Yeah, get absolutely. Nathan, we have, I love it. I feel like I use it all the time. I feel like no one ever coming to our website actually uses it. There's a database that you can actually search every scholarship we have on file. Now, no high school student is going to do that. I wouldn't do that if I were a high school student. So sure. what county or what high school are you with? I'm at Republic High School. It's a charter school in Nashville. Awesome. Yes. Very familiar with Republic. So what I've started doing is making flyers that are specific for counties, populations, that kind of thing. So what mm -hmm. I can do is send you the Davidson County flyer, and it has all the scholarships that are just specific to Davidson County students. And again, your student, that's only, I think there are about 20 or so funds on that sheet. That's only 20 of our 150. But if a student can see one on there they identify with, that mm -hmm. will encourage them to apply then we can match them with other funds potentially as well. So yeah, absolutely. Whatever kind of one pager uh, flyer mm -hmm. that with, with that kind of information on it that can help uh, help to get get students to say, yeah, okay, I should spend some time on this. Would uh, that would be that would be helpful? Yeah, I'll send that to you right as soon as we log off. All right. Do you have my con contact information? I, 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 I don't mind putting it in the chat either. Well. Yeah, I do. I have it for all the registrants, so I can pull it from there, or you can put it in the okay. chat. All right, perfect. Yeah, just pull it from there. That's fine. Perfect. Thank you. So where where do we find this sheet at? You're saying you can search it, but so I'm sorry, clarification. You can search. So each one of our funds has an individual page online. I have not gotten the flyers online yet. So what county are you with, Brooke? And I can send you Williamson. Williamson. I can send you the one for Williamson. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. We're working on getting those online yet. We haven't, um, but I've got one that's like specific for HBCUs. I can make them individual for funds, um, but I do have some for specific counties. So I'll send you Williamson. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, yeah, so any, any that are specific to H, HBCUs would be yes. good for us as well. Uh, or we also have a, a, a large uh, Hispanic population as well. So anything. Yeah, now I will say that's where we're lagging a little bit. We don't have as many specific for um, Hispanic students. That's something we're working on at the Community okay. Foundation, hopefully. But um, but a lot of the Davidson County ones they can apply for. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Great questions. Anybody else have any questions while we're still here? Could you possibly send one for Wilson County? Yes, ma'am. I got you. Who said that just so I can get? Uh, that's see. for Amelia Goodner. Thank you. I will get it sent to you. And anytime um, anybody on here later, if you're like, oh, I really did need that sheet, just shoot me an email. Um, and again, we'll include all of our contact information when we send out the information after the event. Um, that is something we had to get the application out pretty quickly. I started in October, but that is something I'm really hoping to work on in the next few months is getting that all prepared for the next cycle to easily send out to people. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anybody else while we're still here?
Well, thank you all for joining us today. And Lindley and Jason, thank you for your time. Um, I look forward to doing more of these in the future. Y'all rock. Everybody have an amazing weekend. Thank you, KP. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye.